Hi, my name's Simon. Welcome to another video where I'm going to share with you some hints and tips about how to use OBS with your teaching if you, use, if you record material or if you use Zoom or Skype. In this particular video, I'm going to be helping you guys improve the sound quality if you're doing lots of recording for your students because there are some fantastic uh, tools, for want of a better word, in OBS which will help you improve the sound quality and then I'll just give you a few words at the end of this video about the direction you should go in if you want to use this improved sound quality th with your or in your Skype and Zoom lessons. So let's get started. Okay so in the video I did about how to improve sound quality by te with teaching on Skype and Zoom I talked about using an acoustic box and that's definitely something you should think about if it's possible for you to do. But OBS comes with three audio filters that will definitely help you out. One is absolutely essential to you and in this video I'm going to show you how to set it up and then how you can record and benefit from using these audio filters. The first one you have to do and the most essential one is the noise suppression filter and the noise suppression filter gets rid of white noise. In other words it gets rid of the background noise the dogs, the cars, the children, whatever it might be, this will help to get rid of it. The second filter you might think about is a noise gate. Now just as a noise gate is open, just as a gate, sorry, is open and shut, a noise gate opens or shuts the microphone or turns on or turns off the microphone when there is no noise. So if there's no noise, the microphone goes off, when there is noise, the microphone comes back on, starts recording. This is also another useful tool for removing white noise. And then finally, gain. Gain adjusts the volume levels of your microphone. Okie dokie, so these are three filters, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is drag across OBS. Now, I want you to focus on something, and that's this green bar here. This green bar is telling me, and well, showing me and showing you how my microphone is working and the levels it's picking up. But this green bar will also tell me the amount of background noise or white noise that is in my room. And this is really important because if you're recording content and you don't do anything about it, when you're not speaking, your students, and remember most of them will be listening through the headphones, will hear this background hissing or humming going on. And of course, that's not desirable. Let's try to get rid of it. The good news is that OBS gives us a filter which allows us to do exactly that. So we're going to, or first of all, let me show you the amount of background noise. I'm going to stop speaking for a second and have a look at what the microphone is picking up. Okay, so you could see the green bar dancing away at the bottom. That is a low level hum which your students will hear, particularly as I said, if they've got the headphones in their ears. So let's click, right click on the cog and let's go to filters. I'll drag that across behind my head and we're going to click on the plus button down here, plus, and we're gonna click on noise suppression and click on OK. And straight away, we've made a dramatic improvement to the level of sound. We've got rid of the background noise. Don't believe me? I'm going to have, I'm going to stop speaking and have a look at this green bar over here. Okay, there we go. We've already dramatically improved the sound quality. Now, when you, if you go onto the internet and you type in noise suppression OBS, you'll see lots of discussion about the level to set it at. Um, the generally accepted level that I found would be minus 40, but of course this you might just leave it as it is. You could see it already made a huge improvement at minus 30. At minus 40, it does a slightly better job. So straight away, we've got rid of the white, the white noise, the background noise. And for many of you, that's all you have to do. If you want to install the, if you want to use the noise gate filter, which turns off the microphone when there is no noise, then we'll just click on noise gate, click on OK, and you've already come up with a set of values that's already making a difference. Now, there is a wider discussion of noise gates and the values that you can set this at online. I'll leave you to work that one or to have a look at that. I'll leave a link below to the OBS help forum video 
which is a little bit outdated because it talks about downloading something to give you these filters. These filters are now already installed, but the explanations about what these filters does is valid and very, very good. Now, the third one to think about using is the gain uh, is the gain, which talks about the levels of the volume. Now, normally I don't use gain. I just use this here that I'm moving up and down. And you can see that this also changes the gain. Now the sound is a lot quieter and now the sound is a lot louder. And so this, this changes the volume of the microphone. Why is this important? Well, when we're recording, we want to stay out of this yellow area and we want to definitely stay out of this red area. If we go into this red area or go right to the end of the bar, this is what we call clipping, or this is what is called clipping, and it creates distortion in the speakers of your listener, which is a bit of a mouthful to say. So in short, if you hit the end of that bar and your uh, the student or the listener is listening to your YouTube clip, then it's going to create distortion in the speakers right in that person's ear. It's going to be an incredibly unpleasant experience for them. So we want to stay out of that red zone. My phone interrupting me there. And we want to stay out as much as possible for uh, the yellow zone. So we want to just adjust this control so everything is in. The middle. Now, you're probably wondering why isn't the sound changing when I'm moving this up and down? It's because I'm recording my sound for this video onto Audacity and I'll put this sound onto this video track later on. I'll mix it together and this is why the sound has remained constant in this video. But if I was just using the video uh, or the content produced by OBS, then you would of course hear the difference. Okay, and to introduce uh, and to set up gain, just click on gain, click OK for the name of the filter, and then you would just play with this. Some people, I think, set it about minus one. And once again, there's a discussion on the internet about where to put this. I don't really play with it, so I'll leave you to investigate further. So just by setting up these three filters, we've already dramatically improved the sound environment for our, for our recording. So if you um, mark your students' um, homework online, they send you something, you put it up behind you on OBS and you talk about it, then already you're going to be improving their online or their online learning experience. Okay, uh, that's how to improve your recording. Now, I did say I'd say a few words about OBS and Skype and Zoom. Now, it is possible to use those noise filters and benefit from those noise filters in your Skype and Zoom lessons. However, in order to do that, you have to use a virtual sound mixer such as, and I'll just open mine up. This is something that you can get free of charge. Oh, there we go. It's just opened up a web page for me. Now, this will allow me to direct the sound through from OBS, from my microphone through OBS into this virtual sound mixer, which will then be sent to Skype or to Zoom. And then my student would be able to benefit from those uh, audio filters whilst I'm talking to them. But this is an absolute nightmare to set up. It took me two or three hours and earlier on today, uh, it took me two or three hours a few weeks ago and earlier on today I was playing around with it a little bit in preparation for this video. I changed a few settings, I completely forgot what I did and I've made a pig's ear of it again. So it's going to take me a little while to get that set back up in the way that it was set up. But if you've got the time to invest in this or another virtual sound mixer, then it will improve your online sound environment. And of course, it will make you sound that much more professional as well when you're talking online, because there's a number of things that you can do on here in order to change various different functions to give you that radio sound, if that's what you're looking for. But once again, there is a learning curve with that. It does take a bit of time to play around with that and get the settings right. So if you're not technically minded, then get someone to help you with this. I'm not technically minded. It took me three hours or so to get this set up and it probably take me another hour to fix what I did this morning, whatever that is. But it is possible. It is a solution and it is something that you might want to think about. 
Okie dokie, with that being said, I hope that this video was of some use to you. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them below. If you've got any questions and comments about anything to do, anything else to do with OBS and Skype or Zoom lessons, leave those below as well, and I'll do my best to create content for you to help you out. Okay, I'll see you again soon.